ALN 4H and H here. And this is page six, as you can see up in the top right of the ham clock setup. Now let me tell you what I'm doing here. And pardon my voice, I've been fighting this for a while. Um, so my, my friend Vince, N4CME, uh, had a great idea to go into the ham clock color scheme and get the colors to match the maximum usable frequency map. And I'll show you what I mean when I get out of the screen, but I want to go ahead and go through the color changes. First, these are vastly different from what yours are. Now, if you like the way yours are, take screenshots. And let me show you how to do this. I'm going to take my mouse. You can click on each one of these. These square boxes over here on the, I'm down here on the left. You can click on that and then you move these sliders at the top right to the various numbers to get the color scheme you want. Now, I just guessed at it until I got colors that I liked. And I say I like colors that more resembled the color scheme of the maximum usable frequency map. So I just clicked along these different color gradients here until I got the color that closely matched what the uh, scheme is in the maximum usable frequency map. I, I ignored 160 because I don't I don't really display it on, on my ham clock. I mean, you know, it's not one of the VOACAP indications anyway. So I just start with 80. And you'll see I'm using 00, 0, zero for red, 0 for green, and 106 for blue. And then for 60 meters, there we go, I'm using 0 for red, 4 for green, and 205 for blue. And notice here also, I click this box t next to it that that represents to make the line dash. So when it's drawing those lines that show you your short path or long path, if you set it up that way, but default short path, the line will be dashed for 60 meters, which helps me distinguish between the shade of blue I use for 80 and the shade of blue I use for 40. Okay, and 40 kind of works out kind of nice with that, that blue that I'm using for 40 because 40 is so popular, I, I use it a lot. And remember, 40 meters is the 23-hour band. During cycle 24, when the bands were abysmal, 40 meters was our friend. And I've literally stayed up 24 hours to prove this out. 40 meters only closes down, for, in my area, for about an hour early in the morning, like around 4 o'clock, I believe it was. So it's, a, it's the 23-hour band. It's the go-to band if you're ever in doubt. All right, then, uh, so the color scheme for 40, let me go to that. It's zero red, 40 green, 255 blue. All right, and now we'll go to 30 meters, which I've also set to be a dashed line type. Color red, zero, green, 97, blue, 222. All right, now we'll do 20 meters, and that is not gonna be dashed type, okay? Now color red, zero, green, 161, blue, 255. And now we'll go to 17 meters. Red 57, green 242, and blue 213. And now 15 meters, red 65, uh, 255 for green, and 172 for blue. Oh, and I should mention on 17, I did use the dashed line type. Uh, basically, I am using the dashed line type for warp bands, if you want to think it that way. All right, so then again, 15 is red 65, green 255, blue 172, 12 meters, uh, 255 red, 250 green, 115 blue, and again, a dash line type. And then finally, 10 meters, red 255, green 145, and blue uh, 49. I didn't mess with six meters or two, but the six meter color is actually not far off from what it probably would be, maybe. I don't... Yeah, well, the the muff map doesn't really show six, but I've just, you know it's a lighter type of orange there. But again, I didn't change six meters or two meters. Two meters, you know, I'm working HF with this, so if I see two meters, you know, something in that grayish, I just ignore it. So there you go. Now I'm going to click done. It'll make sense to you in just a moment here. Let's let the DX cluster and the soda cluster load. So there you're already up in the soda cluster on the top right. You see that dark gray. That's 146.52. I have no chance of working that station. They're out in Washington State, the W7W. All right, but, but look, so if you look down across the bottom here, 
you'll see the decoder ring for this muff map, the maximum usable frequency map. The orange is the 10 meter band. Not as good today as it has been uh, in the past few days. Um, you know, and it's broken up a little more. You can see there. And it starts out in the morning over here, over Europe and in, uh, in Africa, and then it works its way down across South America, and then it'll work its way over to Australia and Japan. And the other night, I actually, and I've got it on video. I uh, will be putting a video about it, uh, out about it. I worked VK4IM in Australia. Well, at first, I, I, I saw that it, there was some orange over Japan. I tried to work the Japanese station, and there was a big pileup, and by the time I was getting ready to, call him he went QRT but I saw ever a so slight bit of orange over Australia and I say that because it was fading the band was beginning to shut down and I got VK4 IM in Australia uh, and so this this map is is pretty accurate right now if I tried to work Australia on 10 meters wouldn't happen because there's no orange there yet all right so now let's look at the color scheme down around, uh, you know, the three and a half megahertz range is a very, very dark blue. And that's why I set it that way. And then 60 meters uh, right here along in the five megahertz is almost purplish. Um, then on, um, if you look at 40 meters, 40 meters is going to fall right in here, kind of a bold blue. And so I put it as a, as a bold blue if you look up here at this 40 meter spot. It just went away. Look! Look at these uh, almost purple looking. See, that's that's the uh, 60 meter band right there in the uh, DX cluster up there. Now over here on the right, you can see some soda spots for 40 meters. There's that bold bold blue. And now we get up to uh, oh, here's a here's a 17 meter spot, and that's kind of a bluish green. And then I've got 15 meters at green. Well, again, you look down here. 17 meters is right along in here where it's transitioning from a light blue to a green. Uh, 21 megahertz is is in the green, all right? And there aren't any up there right now, but I've, uh, that color scheme has the uh, 24 megahertz, the 12 meter band in yellow, which is right below this 25 here where it is yellow. And then, um, we have, I wish one would show up up there, but not right now. And then, of course, we get into orange, which is uh, the 10 meter band. So let's see, 20, 20, we don't have. I don't see a 20 meter. Are you kidding me? There's not a 20 meter spot up there. Look at this, man. But 15 meters is hot today. Look at that. 15 meters is happening. Um, but 40 meters is going to be a, a light blue. And if you look down here at the Almost a cyan, by the way, if you're familiar with that color name, cyan, light blue. Right below that 15, you can see it's kind of light blue there. So uh, it's a shame none have shown up. Oh, there we go. There's there's 20 meters right there. See that? Kind of a lighter shade of blue than the 40, right? And then, oh, and here, good. There's 30 meters. Again, a little darker. So what I'm doing is I'm working my way from a darker blue for 80 meters to the lighter blue for 40 meters before it hands off to the, um, you know, bordering on green for 17 meters. And that more closely matches what we have down here along this, uh, what I call the decoder ring, you know, the scale here for reading the maximum usable frequency map. I find this to be an extremely, extremely helpful tool uh, for this device because you can look over there at a glance and you know, oh, do I have a chance of working them or not? So right now we don't have a chance of working Europe on uh, on 10 meter band. See the orange has already moved away from Europe. Now let me go up here and I'll click on, um, let me find one here. I'll click on this, here we go, this 20 meter contact, uh, 14190 PY6FP. He's 4,418 miles away. See down here in the lower left. My beam heading, if I wanted to work him short path, would be 129. And his temperature right now is uh, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's his uh, barometer reading, his humidity, <laughs> northeast winds, 10 miles per hour, and they've got rain. There we go. Now we get the VOACAP index. Do I have a chance at working that station on uh, 20 meters? Nope. See? Look. Black. 
And red, red means, uh, so in about an hour, each of these blocks represents an hour. So in about an hour, I've got less than a 33% chance of working that station, but then it suddenly goes to the next hour. I have a chance of uh, absolutely working him because that is in green, which is a 66 or better percent chance of having propagation to that station. And then after about four hours, it's going to go yellow, which means I've got between a 33% chance and a 66% chance. So there you go. That's to work um, the uh, the PY4 station, um, which is over, what was he, somewhere in Europe. I should know what PY is. No, I'm drawing a blank on it right now. Uh, let's try this one, YB0AR, 40 meters. Oh, wow, look at this, all the way over here. So he, yeah, see, he's a little bit beyond. We got some blue there for 40 meters, uh, but, um, well, that blue is a little bit lighter, so that's more like, more in the range of 30 and, and 20 meters. But the VOA cap's gonna tell me just a moment whether I have a chance. No, see, no chance, look at that. Not gonna happen. All right, but like I said, this uh, these are American stations here, but like I said, the, um, 15 meters is hotter than a firecracker. Let's see, 28074. Let's try that one. That is, that's a, of course, a FT8 frequency, and there's a, it's a guy in the U.S. So, the green dots probably underneath all those call signs right there. Oh, I think it's, yeah, it's out right out here. So let's see what the VOACAP data says when it comes back. And uh, you know, let's see, what did I say? He was on 40. 40 meters, yeah, not a chance, not a chance. Um, here's a, let's see, KX6I, that's a soda station on CW28063. That's just a common area for CW, especially for the soda operators. So let's see what comes back on VOACAP. Now I can tell you right now, look, the orange band is barely anything left over the US. So that's gonna be slim to none chance. We'll find out in a moment when the weather data goes away, and there it is, VOACAP. Okay, so, yeah, right now, it is saying I've got a shot at him. See there, green, uh, green block next to 10 meters. So, in the particular location he is in, um, KX6I, yeah, he's right. You can't see it, but it, look at my arrow. His call sign's covered up by N6TTV, but he's right in that little area of orange. So, there you go, a little insight into the, the color scheme there. And I, I just, you know, at the, I was inspired by events to go in there and make those color changes so that uh, what I see up here in the DX cluster, in my case, soda over here on the right, the color bars for what band it is match with the colors down in the MUF map, the maximum usable frequency map. So... Uh, and by the way, sunspot number today, if you look right here where the arrow is, that's S equals 45, not so great. Uh, solar flux index 153. These are not great numbers. Probably one of the reasons that we don't see a lot of bright orange here for the 10 meter band today. But wow, uh, let's see, when was it? Earlier in this week, earlier this week, 10 meters was hotter than a firecracker. So you guys jump in there and enjoy this because this is only going to happen for about another three and a half, four years. And, uh, you know, I mean, in fact, it's going to peak out in a couple of years and then it's going to start going back down again. And, uh, you know, because we only get this cycle every 11 years. I was talking to somebody recently, uh, just a quick, quick comment before I go. Uh, I was talking to a guy who's my age. I said, you know, you and I, if we if we stay healthy, we probably only have about two more sunspot cycles in us. Uh, so enjoy these while you can. Hey, thanks for watching uh, videos on my channel. And please hang around for another half minute. I want to recognize uh, five of the Patreon team members that I call long haulers. Uh, without their support, you wouldn't be watching this video or about 450 of the others. Uh, they have helped me keep this project going since I don't accept any monetary support from manufacturers. Uh, or even retailers. I want to be able to tell you the uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly without having anybody censor me. So without the private support, this channel doesn't happen. So hey, I, again, I, I hope you enjoyed the video and please hang around and let me acknowledge five of those long hauler Patreon team members. 73 from N4 H&H. &H.